and welcome to CNET's The Fix. The show about do-it-yourself tech and how-tos. I'm Sharon Profis. And I'm Eric Franklin. It is time to get back to school. And there is so much to keep track of in the new school year that starting off on the right track can really make all the difference. That's right. If you want to optimize your experience while using your computer, we've got some tips for you. There are so many ways to set up your new Mac, but if you're just getting started, here are five of the most essential settings. First, let's get something really important out of the way, keeping track of your Mac. If it ever falls out of your grasp or you leave it in the library under some drunken fatigue, there is an easy setting that'll let you find out exactly where you left it. It's a good idea to enable Find My Mac. Like Find My iPhone, the free service lets you locate your missing Mac from any other device. By default, it's disabled. So to turn it on, head to System Preferences, then iCloud, and check the box next to Find My Mac. Give it permission, and you're good to go. Now, if you ever need to find your computer, just log into iCloud on another browser or use the app on another iOS device. Once you log in, a map will show up pinpointing the last tracked location of your Mac. Okay, with that safeguard in place, let's enable a few small but important features that'll make getting around your Mac a lot easier. For starters, enable tap to drag. Go to Preferences, then Accessibility Settings. Then head over to Mouse and Trackpad, then Trackpad Options, and Enable Dragging. You might also want to customize what shows up on your desktop. For instance, you can put your hard drive directly on your desktop for quick access. To do this, go to the Finder menu and choose Preferences. Then to the General tab and use these checkboxes to pick the items that'll appear on your desktop. And one more setting you'll be much more relaxed enabling, battery percentage. There is no use trying to figure out how much battery is left based on this symbol. So instead, click the battery symbol and head down to show percentage. Select it, and from now on, you'll see exactly how much power you have left. Now, if you want to be really productive on your Mac, get to know the gestures. Apple calls the trackpad the magic trackpad for a reason. It can do a lot more than just mouse around. So for instance, you can use two fingers up or down to scroll on any page. To zoom, double tap with two fingers or use the familiar pinch to zoom. To navigate, swipe left or right with two fingers and to view all open apps, swipe down with three fingers and pinch out with your thumb and three fingers to reveal the desktop at any point. Finally, if you have spaces or full screen apps open, use three fingers to navigate between them. Now that you have those essential tips down, you're one step closer to mastering your Mac. You know, I've been using Mac for like several years now, and I didn't even know about some of those gestures. There you go. Yeah. All right, it's time for a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to show you how to Google search like a pro. Welcome back. The internet is an amazing tool for digging up information for just about anything. But how many times have you done a search and you've gotten just way too much irrelevant information or just not the right thing? Yeah, that happens to me every single day. Yep, me <laughs> yeah, too. Seriously. But the solution might be advanced search filters and search operators, especially when you're searching on Google. We got some tips for you. Being smart isn't just about memorizing information. It's also about being able to find the information you need. For most of us, that first point of information retrieval is Google, but not every Google search is created equal. I'm gonna show you some advanced features of Google search that will help you pinpoint exactly what you're looking for. The first thing to know is that Google actually has an advanced search page that they kinda hide over at google.com slash advanced underscore search. Now using that, you can search for exact phrases, you can define subjects that are gonna be excluded from search, you can even filter the results by language or region, or even filter out explicit content. For example, let's say we're looking for some Star Wars fan fiction that's written in German and available as a PDF and doesn't mention Jar Jar Binks, 
and for the sake of this video, is not pornographic. I'll put in fan fiction as the general search term, and then Star Wars as a specific search term, and then I'll say excluding Jar Jar, and I'm gonna filter this by the German language, turn safe search on, and then select PDF as the file type. Boom! It's a lot of German Star Wars fan fiction that doesn't have Jar Jar Binks doing horrible things. The great thing about searching this way is that you already have a template for how to structure your search. It's great also if you're looking for something pretty complicated and you really want to be able to define the parameters for your search. Now you can perform a pretty similar search right from the Google homepage if you use some choice punctuation. Google calls these search operators and there's dozens of them out there but I'm gonna talk about the ones that are the most useful. Now let's say you're looking for a specific phrase. If you put in quotation marks, Google will acknowledge the entire phrase instead of each individual word. For example, if I wanna search for people who are talking about the best donut they've ever had, I'll type the phrase, this is the best donut I've ever had inside quotation marks and Google will filter just the results that have those exact words in that exact order. I see results here from Twitter and if I wanna filter those out, I can adjust the search by adding a dash or a minus sign in front of the word Twitter. Or let's say I want my results only from Twitter, I could adjust the search by adding site colon twitter.com and then I've only got results with that phrase from Twitter. Finally, a few quick tips. Now, Google is not only the most famous search engine in the world, it's also a great calculator. It can even handle scientific calculations. It can also handle unit conversions. If you wanna know how many ounces are in a gallon, just type it in and you've got the answer. If you wanna define a word, you can just type in define colon and the word you're looking for. And for an easy way to pad your term paper with some impressive citations, you can go to scholar.google.com and you're gonna get a searchable index of articles and abstracts and books all from academic publishers. So that's it, that's how to take your Google search skills up to the next level. The one I use every single day has gotta be quotations because you can make sure that Google gets it right. Quick question for you. Yes. How many languages do you speak? I'll go with three. All right, well if you're like me, you only speak one language and you got some free time between classes, whatever it is you're doing, there's an easy and entertaining way to learn the basics of a new language. It's available for all of your tech devices, plus it's free. There are plenty of tools out there that can help you learn a new language, but by far my favorite has to be Duolingo. Duolingo is a free app available for both Android and iOS that's effective at increasing your vocabulary and improving your grammar in a number of languages such as Spanish, French, Italian, and German. So here's how it works. Duolingo starts you off with the basics. In this case, I'm learning Spanish and it's asking me to select the boy. It's giving me four pictures to choose from. In this case, I'm gonna select the boy, which is El Nino. El Nino. There you go. And then click check and I get a nice little chime there confirming that I got it right. And I continue, and in this case, it's asking me to select the girl, La Nina. La Nina. There you go. What's great about this is that you can go through the lessons multiple times, and each time the app is gonna select Hello, different buddy. words for you to learn. So you can increase your vocabulary the more times you go through it. La Mujer. The other thing you're gonna learn with Duolingo is how to translate sentences. In this case, it's a very simple sentence. Un niño. Un niño. So all I have to do is select A, and then boy, and then check, and I'm correct. Very easy to do. Una mujer. Una mujer. All right. La mujer, el hombre. Okay, this is a little bit more complex for me. So, la mujer, el hombre the woman and the man. All right, that was a long shot for me because I'm not very good at Spanish, but I actually got it correct. Un hombre. So now I have this asking me to type in Spanish. So I have to remember how uh, words are spelled. So I have to think back to the lessons I previously learned and apply them in this one. So Un hombre. I can repeat the audio Un hombre. I can even slow it down. Un hombre. I'm pretty sure I know how to spell that. All right, there you go. So I'm gonna translate the girl. So I'm gonna choose la, 
and then type in Spanish what girl is. I'm pretty sure it's niña. Oh, and it's correct. So the further along you go in your lessons, the more complicated things get. Okay, this is a little bit more complex here. So now I have to select the missing word. Ah, it's mujer is a feminine word. So I have to select the feminine version of a, uh, basically. Pretty sure it's una. Yeah, I'm correct. El niño, la niña. Okay, in this case, it's going to test my pronunciation. Uh, of Spanish, which honestly isn't that good, but I'm gonna try it anyway. So I'm gonna tap to start recording. El niño, la niña. Yeah, I got it. Pretty close, right? <laughs> All right, cool. You know, in the last few months, I've learned a lot using Duolingo, but you know, I'm not fluent in a new language, but that's really not what these apps are about. What they are is a really fun and entertaining way to help you learn a new language. Ella come. Muy bueno. Ah, très bien. <laughs> That's it for this week's show. Thank you so much to Mills College in Oakland, California for letting us hang out on your beautiful campus. And guys, if you want to send us your feedback, your comments, your suggestions, you can reach me at Nidopo on Twitter. And I'm at Sharon Profis. Plus, email us. We've got a new email address. It's thefix at cnet.com. See you next time, guys. Right here on The Fix.